In this video, we are going to see polar plot of a pole at origin. And a pole at origin can be written as 1 over s. Okay. And it can also be written as 1 over s plus 0. And if we indicate this pole on a s plane, okay, s plane, this is sigma and this is j omega. We represent this as a cross mark at origin. This is the indication of pole on s plane. We come across this in <coughs> root locus techniques. Okay. For getting the polar plot of a function, we substitute s with j omega. As we are going to plot this value of magnitude of this function and phase with respect to the phase angle, okay, on a complex plane when omega is changed from zero to infinity. So now substituting this <coughs> s equals j omega in this function, we get one over j omega. If you write this in magnitude and phase angle form, we have one over j omega times minus tan inverse of omega divided by 0, which will be infinity, which we can also write as 1 over omega minus 90 degrees. Okay, take this is angle representation. <clears throat> now, if we take values of omega varying from 0 to infinity, now when omega is 0, m will be infinity as it is inversely proportional to omega and phi is going to be minus 90 degrees, which is independent of omega. And similarly, if we change uh, omega from 0 to infinity, the magnitude m is going to decrease and it tends to 0 when omega tends to infinity. And phi angle won't change. It is independent of omega here. And <coughs> the phase angle will be minus 90 degrees throughout the interval in which omega is changed from 0 to infinity. If you take a complex plane, the horizontal axis being the real axis and this being the imaginary axis. Now, to start plotting this, let's see how the angle is measured on this plane. Okay, this is a complex plane. Okay, if we if there is a point on the j omega, or if there is a point on the imaginary axis, positive imaginary axis as pointed here, a vector representing this or a phasor representing this, the angle measured to this in the anticlockwise direction is plus 90 degrees. We take anticlockwise references as plus 90, okay, plus positive. And the measurements towards clockwise direction is minus. In this case, if you have a point here, it is minus 90 degrees, okay. <clears throat> Similarly, you can measure angles both ways. Okay, now here we have minus 90 degrees. Minus 90 degrees corresponds to the imaginary axis in the negative one. Okay, <clears throat> that is this section of the line. Now, <clears throat> if you plot these values on this complex plane, let's see how it looks. Okay. When omega equals 0, it is infinity. Okay. This plot, and do keeping dots here, representing that the plot is going to be very long. Okay. So, we can represent somewhere here okay, for uh, omega tending to 0 kind of. Okay. And as omega is increased, the magnitude decreases, but the phase angle won't change, which means that the plot is going to be on the imaginary axis in the negative direction. Okay, we are representing this arrow marks in this way because it represents the way in which omega is increased for which we are getting this plot. Okay, it goes like this and it tends to zero when omega tends to infinity. So we point, we represent this point when omega tends to infinity and this point when omega equals zero. Okay, this is how the polar plot looks for a pole at origin.